Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have two special guests. It is our special Hawaii roundtable edition. Scott Bossman, take it away. Um, take what away? Like our music. Yeah, all right. I, th- I wanted you to take over that because I don't know. I can sing the Brady Bunch, though. Okay. Wow, well, do Anything you want to sing. <laughs> You're not going to sing There's it. No all. singing. There's only singing on Nightcap, Mark. That's it. All right, fine. Well, we have the usual suspects. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good, Mark. Good to see you. We've got the Zen master, breathing the mailing, breathe out the marketing, Mike Zeno. Hello. Doing great. How are you? Good to see you. We've got the dude buddy, Nightcap OG, won't sing when he's sober, Scott Boston. Scott, how are you? (laughs) I am great, Mark. Thank you. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks Good for asking. You. you too. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, good to see you. How are you? Well, thanks. You know what would be great, Tate? What's that? If I could look if over the your hockey shoulder. season resumed? If the oh. hockey season yeah. resumed, but if I could just look over your shoulder. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Tate has a Netflix series, not on Netflix, called Lots. Look over Tate's shoulder. Watch how he works. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash lots. And last but not least, your land geek Sherpa, your flight school Sherpa, the brain, the professor, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm confused. Again? I'm confused that does Tate actually work? How can you look over his shoulder when he's like not working at all? You know, Scott, it's funny that you say that because I was talking to my uh, my brother the other day and he asked me that straight up. He's like, so do you like really work? What's, what's going on? Because I don't think he fully understands how the land business works. So I answered his question very simply. No, I don't really work that much. So, uh, to answer your question, the answer is no, I don't work that much. But when I do work, it's very rare, but it's very focused. Ah, uh, good to know. Mm-hmm. He, he, Tate's, Tate's a, like, you know, he sprints and then he rests. Sprints and then he rests, which I think is a phenomenal work ethic, by the way, because it gets her done. So because this is going to be our, our Hawaii edition, we have Don Pereza. And Racine Sugai, two recent flight school grads whom are, act- who are absolutely crushing it. Dawn's nickname is the Land Arb Queen. And we need to give Racine a nickname. We'll have to give it to her after this podcast. But they've been going on. Like, so I've been doing Facebook Live just about every day. Bossman and Zeno join me all the time. And sure enough, Dawn and Racine are always there. And they're always talking about these deals are closing. And it got to be to the point where like, wait, how are they closing so many deals so fast? So inquiring minds want to know. We thought we'd go around and ask them just, you know, first about, you know, some things about flight school, how it was for them, and then what, what's been going on with their land business. So Don, Racine, welcome. And Tate, we'll, we'll let you, you know, kind of grill the, uh, the Hawaiian geeks. All right. First of all, aloha, right? I'm excited to have you guys. My first question is a simple one. And it has to do with your deals. Have you closed a deal on the beaches yet of Hawaii? <laughs> no, not on the beaches. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that <laughs> That's the homework right there. I want to see a deal happen while looking, maybe not over Waikiki, because that's like a little too touristy for you guys being locals. But uh, I'd love to get like a picture of you guys 
on your phone closing a deal and then like diving into the ocean that'd be sweet so that's that's my challenge but i'm excited to have you guys on the on the show today it's gonna be a lot of fun uh i want to know how you how you decided to settle on land investing what was it that caught your attention on raw vacant land in the middle of nowhere what what was it that you found attractive or interesting racing you want to start okay um I actually was looking into investing in tax liens mm -hmm. and then I realized that it was going to take years to get my money back and this one um, lady I guess that I was looking into had Mark on her podcast or web webinar so yeah I just happened to see that and I was like oh what is he talking about like passive income and investing in land and so it just kind of piqued my interest and I just decided to follow up with that and did a little research and that's how I got started I love it Don how about you I heard Mark on um, he was a guest on the wealth without Wall Street podcast and I didn't hear his first one, but I heard it back in September, October last year. And after I heard it, I uh, bought his book. I bought Doug Rich. And then I messaged Mark on um, the DM on their, on the Wealth Without Wall Street, uh, their Mighty Network. And he responded. And I thought it was so cool that, you know, he wrote back to me. Like, I thought, wow, it's like talking to Oprah Winfrey. And, you know, I got a response from Mark. And so I thought, okay, so... He seems humble. He seems really nice. Um, and then after that, I watched a whole bunch of um, podcasts and I listened to the, you know, the, the, I watched the videos on YouTube and then I, I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. And that's when I bought the toolkit in December. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. So is raw land as exciting as you thought it would be? It's been fun. It's very, um, it's different for sure. <laughs> yeah. The lack of excitement's not a bad thing though, is it, right? We want something that's very predictable and uh, routine. So I get it. It's not sexy. That's all right. That's kind of how we want to keep it. I kind of love it. I love it. Like I'm learning new things. The other day, um, Racine asked me if I knew how to make a 3D, those 3D lines on Google Earth. And I told her I, I didn't know how to, but I was going to figure it out. And I'll do crazy things. Like I'll make myself stand up so I don't fall asleep and I'll figure it out. <laughs> and I did. I figured it out. And I created my first video for her. <laughs> I said, I'm yeah, going to make you a tutorial. Really good. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love it. Nice. Eric Peterson, what mm -hmm. questions do you have for the Hawaiian land geeks living in Paris? Yeah. I think uh, one that we hear at Grill the Geeks very often at boot camp kind of goes like this number one or part one how many deals have you closed to date and what was the best deal and give us some numbers around that so we'll start with don yeah i don't like numbers um <laughs> i have done it's 10 i think 10 uh term um notes my favorite was my first because it was the last day of um, flight school and it was that it happened that morning and I just got a phone call and um, it was, can you call me at this number? And it happened in less than 15 minutes. I sold my first property on a term deal. I didn't even know what I was doing. Scott, Scott scolded me on flight school because he was like, you didn't set up geek pay. He goes, that's what I told you to do. <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's always going to be memorable for me because it was a 15 minute deal. You know, no question. Boom, boom. Got everything, got strike set up that day. So that was fun. And numbers, I don't know. I have a spreadsheet, but I don't know like the passive coming in yet. It's just, I'm not good with that part. <laughs> okay. Racine? Um, so I think I've closed five deals so far. Um, a couple were wholesale and then I have like three, three notes. Um, and then my favorite was like my first one. Um, I was telling Dawn, I was like, oh my gosh, this lady, like she just totally wanted to buy this property and she gave me her whole like story about how she's dying and she only has like two and a half years to live and she's cancer. And I was like, oh my God, what? I mean, you know, she wants to leave something to her kids. And I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. 
So, I mean, that was very um, touching and surprising. And I was like, what do I do? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and then I think, so I bought the property, it was two properties. Um, and I bought them for a total of $902 and 50 cents. And I sold it to her for, I think it's like $4,800. Um, and she's paying like $200 a month. And I think I got four, four something down. Well, part of it was the, the dock fee, but I got like a total of like 450, I think. Um, and then she's gonna pay it off in two years. And then she wants to buy another property in Nevada, which is, then I contacted Dawn and I was like, hey, so don't you have that property in Nevada? So then I got, got it through her, which is actually through Tate. So awesome. land art that one, yeah. Nice, nice. Dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, the Nightcap OG, what questions do you have? I'll tell us a little bit about your why. What, uh, in addition to, you know, maybe some passive income, what are, what are the reasons you're doing this? Uh, we all have very strong whys, I think. So a lot of times they overlap, but, but tell us a little bit about that. Dawn? Racine, or Dawn, <laughs> we'll start with you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I've, I've been an educator for the last, you know, over 20 years and, um, you know, my kids are getting older and I discovered, um, like I said, the Wall Street, Wall Street and they talked a lot about passive income and financial freedom and that's not ever been in my language. And then when I heard, you know, about, you know, how to generate this, you know, type of passive income through this selling land, I just, it piqued my interest. And so the why for me is, future for my family. Um, and then I love the idea of being able to work when I want, where I want, and with who I want, you know. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> for me, um, I, I'm a hair and makeup artist and, you know, I'm not getting any younger. My body is starting to hurt. I have to stand all the time. So I, you know, figure that this would be a good I guess, supplement and hopefully it'll replace what I'm doing and I can retire, retire from that. Um, and then, yeah, travel. That's what I want to do. So. Do people in Hawaii actually travel? Like, where yeah, would right? you go? <laughs> <laughs> they go to other islands. <laughs> like, do you, do you call Dawn and be like, I guess I'm going to go to Lanai today. <laughs> 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 no, I, had, in fact, no i went to budapest in march and i was at the airport and i was messaging her because i was trying to do my um my mailings i brought my laptop and i was like oh my gosh somebody responded to an offer letter and oh my god it's, it's like a trust i don't know what i'm doing i'm getting on a plane this is ridiculous i don't know what's going on she's like oh don't worry i was like oh my god <laughs> but nice. yeah just so to you get out closed a deal in Hungary mm, or bought not, a deal? Not, mm, I mean, I started, started the process and then I'm still going through it now because apparently I guess the, the lady lives in Africa, South Africa, something like that. I don't, I don't know how this works. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Um, that's, both of those are, are, are wonderful whys. Uh, Mimi Schmidt. Let's get those, that, that grill going, the terrace hunter. I wanna know what your biggest obstacle has been so far and what your favorite part about the business is. Don, you wanna go first since Racine just finished? Okay. Um, well, the last two weeks I've been, I've gotten on this um, sauce ban on Facebook. I think that's been an obstacle. I think the first time it happened, I felt devastated because it's, you know, it's my main, it's my main uh, marketing um, avenue. And I was just, I, I felt just, you know, lost. And then I talked to Mimi and, you know, she was like, start, you know, have a backup plan. And so I did. And I think it happened again yesterday for 24 hours. I don't know what it is. Like my leads, the messages that we've been exchanging, they can't see it just disappears. 
luckily it's gone away again. So this morning I woke up and I started getting messages like ding ding, you know, started coming through. Uh, and I think that's been an yeah, that's just been an obstacle. I feel like right now that's just set up a quick call. I know what that is. You do. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's been the obstacle um, for me right now. And then my favorite thing is talking to the people. I love talking to the people. And, you know, when they tell me, you know, they have this dream or that they wanted to do this and they never thought it possible and sharing and hearing their stories. I just, you know, I love it. I, I met this one guy, he's in, he, he want, he's a nurse and, you know, he's, has a family of five and he's just so excited and it just those stories are just the ones that I don't want to miss and pass up on. Racine. Um, so the biggest challenge for me was setting up the whole Craigslist thing because you know we're in the middle of the ocean you know far from everything and just trying to post to Craigslist was a challenge so luckily I think Dawn found somebody or she was referred somebody from Larry, right? Dawn. Um, and um, so I didn't use that guy, but I did find somebody else on, on Upwork to actually post for me, which is, has been good. So um, yeah, that was like the biggest thing. Cause I was like, how do you even market? I don't know what I'm doing. And I, at the time I was in Hungary. I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm missing class. I don't know what's going on. So, um, yeah, that was the challenge. And then the, the thing I love most also is like Dawn. Like I love talking to the people, you know, getting their backstories. Um, this one guy that I just had to deal with yesterday, he's so excited. Like he's telling me all like, he's going to have a farm and he's going to do this and that. And he's talking so fast. And I was like, oh, okay. I couldn't even tell. I was like, yeah, there's a doc fee, but never mind. It's fine. Just, yeah. Just <laughs> awesome. Nice. Nice. Tate, did you have something you wanted to add? No? No, no. I was just, I was smiling because I just love your guys' enthusiasm. I love the fact that you fully embraced being a land investor and because you're, you're developing that passion about what we do and how we help people, you're having success. And it's, it's clearly obvious to me that your success is not by accident. It's, it's not by chance. It's a result of you caring. It's a result of your hard work. And, and the energy uh, that you share with people is, uh, it's contagious. So I'm just really excited by that. It makes, me, it makes me happy because you get it. You figured it out. It's no secret. No, that's so true. It's so true. Zen master, what <laughs> questions do you have for Hawaii Five O? <laughs> Hawaii and Five O. <laughs> um, I would just like to know, you know, you, you're both experiencing success. What's 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 the goal one year from now? What what do you what are you looking to do within the next year? I think for me, it's now letting go of the face. You know, like having someone training some VAs and having people you know help me and work for me that way so that I'm not working in the business but I'm working on the business I'm scared of it because you know I think that's part of the the secret is you know responding really quickly and you know when they start connecting with you um you know who's gonna be another me <laughs> that's the part I'm afraid of <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to sound, I'm not trying to sound conceited or anything. It's just who's going to respond the way that I respond and who's going to care the way that I care. I don't know, but I, I, I'm praying that they exist out there. And um, so in a year, I'm hoping that I'm just looking at it from the bigger picture and operating that way. Like, you know, when I see Mimi and her um, Trello and it's all like, this is going here and automated here and this and that, and I, I want to be there. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would have to ditto that too. I would, I don't want to make, I don't want to be a slave to my business. You know, like I've already done that with my hair and makeup stuff. It's constant. It's kind of annoying, but you know, there's only me and that's how it is. So for this, I want to have, you know, want it to be automated and not have to think about it so much. Um, but I also want to have like $10,000 a month at least. <laughs> so I don't know if I could do that in a year, but 
Okay. Awesome. I love it. Before we go to Scott Todd and his question, I just have to quickly um, mention our sponsor this week, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life, start creating passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Go up the mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with none other than your Sherpa, Scott Todd. Learn more, just schedule a call with the dude buddy, NICAP OG, Scott Bossman, or the Zen master, Mike Zeno, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training, which leads me to my question. So rarely do we get a chance to talk about Scott Todd right to his face. So my question is, after 16 weeks of flight school, what, what was flight school like? And do you look back on it now? And what, like, what, what was that experience really like for you? Getting into it, you know, like, why not just do the toolkit? <laughs> Racing, you wanna start? Okay, so I purchased the toolkit in December and at that time, it, there was an offer to buy a piece of land. So I was like, okay, cool. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do this. And um, so I tried to watch the videos and go through it myself. And I was like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think at that time, too, they're advertising for flight school. And I called Scott Bossman and, you know, and I talked to him. And it was just for me, I was just like, yeah, I need direction because I have no clue how this land business works. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can watch this, but I still don't get it. Like I need actual interaction and someone to push me. So that's what I did. And it was very, very helpful. So I totally recommend it. What, what was it like with Scott Todd every week though? It was awesome. It was really good. I like, I like Scott Todd. In fact, I was telling Don, I was rewatching um, one of the old lessons and I was like, oh, I actually miss like class with Scott Todd. <laughs> and she's like, I know what you mean. So I'm like, yeah. And again, I'm not paying racing to say any of this, Scott, just so you know. <laughs> maybe I did. Her. I mean, maybe I paid her. You don't know. <laughs> well, how do you know what question I was going to ask? <laughs> Listen, a, a smart guy always covers all his bases. That's true. That's right. Don, how about you? What what was your flight school experience like? And I well, I was on that different. I was on the international plan. I couldn't um, make the classes, you know, at that time because I was working, and um, so it was a little bit harder because I didn't have that immediate interaction, um, and I had to watch it, you know, a few days later. So I had to go onto our Mighty Networks and I had to like find people that I could message and ask them questions because I, you know, there were still things that I didn't really quite, you know, connect with right away. Um, but, but I was lucky because I was able to have, you know, a coach, you know, through the process. And so I got Mimi. And so that was really helpful. Like I started calling Mimi and, you know, she kind of helped guide me through things. And I think that filled in a lot of gaps for me. So it was really, um, it was really helpful. And I was able to actually go on the very, very last class of flight school. And I remember Scott was like, well, here's the name I never saw before. And um, Don, you know, who are you? And, and so later, one of our classmates, he, I didn't know him, but he messaged me. He goes, I thought it was a hoax. He goes, I thought you just came on. You were one of their background sidekicks because all of a sudden you appeared, you had a sale and you know, but it, it, it just, it just happened that way. It flowed and it, it all of it was real. <laughs> and um, anyway, I, I enjoyed flight school. I felt like I still go back to the videos. I have to watch. Um, I have a hard time with numbers, like I said. So the yield, the yield thing for me was not easy. I got the calculator. I couldn't figure it out. I had to ask Racine a thousand times, where did I put that number? And how is this, how does this work? <laughs> But Scott was, you know, he, he went over it in class. And so I watched it again and again and again. And um, I figured it out. But anyway, so a flight school for me was really helpful. Filled in a lot of the holes that I couldn't find when I did the toolkit first initially. Because um, I got frustrated. I watched every video in the toolkit for the first two weeks. And then I got to the toolkit part and then I got stuck. And so I think that the flight school portion has really, was really helpful, you know, in that way. Filling it in and then getting that support 
um, you know, through the coach, through Mimi, and um, the people in the community. No, that, that's awesome. And, you know, everyone who, who works with Mimi loves working with Mimi, but we, we don't want her to get too big ahead. So, Scott Todd, any questions? Well, I appreciate all the, the kind words about flight school. I'll pay you later, as we previously agreed. And uh, no, Dawn was not a plant for the last one. I mean, I guess it could be like that, but she was not a planted person. Uh, she's a real person who executes her. You know, one of the things that I love about your story is that there's a theme that I continue to hear that you say, which has to do with, you don't know what you're doing, and it doesn't seem like you really care that you don't know what you're doing. Like, aren't you afraid of making a mistake? <laughs> no, I'm laughing because I make mistakes every day. <laughs> and I have zero, even the land arm. It was like, I just, you said, there's homework. You need to do this. And I signed, I was like, ooh, they said Tate Litchfield, call him. Okay, I had zero idea what I was doing, but I just jumped in. I think maybe not having that fear. I'm more fearful being on these podcasts and these lives than doing all the other things. <laughs> <sighs> yeah you just have to trust and believe and just follow the recipe like you said so yeah yeah you know mark it's it's music to my ears because we see so many people that that they might go through flight school but they're scared of making a mistake right like they're scared of of an ad like not sounding professional who cares they're scared of oh my gosh i might get something wrong who cares right? Like we've all made mistakes in this business. Mistakes is how you learn. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to get locked up and frozen because you're looking for perfection, then you're never going to uh, achieve the results that you're hearing about on this podcast. Because the reality is, is that you just have to let go. And I love what you said, Racine, which is follow the recipe. So, <laughs> I mean, that's really, that's really the, the secret, I think. You know, oftentimes we'll hear people say, you know, like Mark, you know, someone asked you the other day, like, well, what kind, of, what kind of mindset does someone have to have to be successful? I think we just sum, summed it up here, right? Like anytime we're ever asked that question in the future, just, to, just do that one little video segment right there. That's it. Have the Hawaiian mindset. The Hawaiian <laughs> mindset. Yeah, uh, no, it, it's, it is true. And, you know, they're babies, like literally like babies in this business. Like four months ago, they knew nothing. Now Don's closed 10 deals, Racine's closed five deals. If you can close one deal, there's this thing scales. Like you can close thousands and thousands of deals. And we always overestimate what we can accomplish in a, uh, in a year, but we underestimate what we can accomplish in five. And both of you are on that track of getting rid of solo economic dependency and having your passive income exceed your fixed expenses, working because you want to, not because you have to. And Racine's gonna be able to travel around the world, making money in her sleep, letting the machine do what it needs to do. Dawn's gonna be able to spend more time with her kids doing what she wants to do, not have to worry about you know, the, the labor union at her school or whatever happens <laughs> there. And it's, it's really thrilling to be able to, to witness it at this point in time. What, is really so cool about both of you is you didn't even know each other. You're both from Hawaii. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like Boston, right? Everybody's got a, you know, a really strong work ethic in Boston because there's nothing else to do. The weather stinks, like, ah, let's work, right? But you're living in paradise and getting this done and doing deals joyfully, which is even more impressive. Because I lived in Hawaii, I'd be surfing every day. <laughs> or uh, no, dying, Mark, dying trying, right? Mark. Uh, I mean, let's be honest, man. Like, so I was it Tate that said, have they closed the deal on the beach? Why would they do that? Why would they work on the beach? Man, it's playtime on the beach. It's not yeah. work. Come on, Tate. That's a yeah. That's, a, that's what, that's what Scott Those deals Walker on your bike, Tate? Put on his socks and sandals and go work right. on the beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. Scott no, Bossman does wear socks and sandals. We right. think. <laughs> we think <laughs> so we are at that point now in the podcast where we get to put mimi schmidt the terrorist hunter on the spot and ask her for her tip of the week a website a resource a book something actionable 
where the art of passive income listeners go, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Oh, Mimi, you're on mute. This is the link to Airtable's trainings. Sign yourself up and get notifications on all their trainings. I get a lot of students that are new. I tell, you know, us coaches, we say, go out and get Airtable. And they want videos on how to use it. I always suggest people go get Eric Peterson's posting domination template out there. Um, right here, you can get all hooked up with the latest stuff that they're doing. They actually send out uh, emails too. They have all kinds of new roll-ups, look-ups, and count fields that you can use to summarize your data. So you can manage it instead of working in the business. So that's my tip. Don, what are your thoughts on that tip? I love it. I love Airtable. I use Eric posting domination. I had a hard time with the formula, so I just manipulated a little, but I love it. Yeah. Great tip. Racine, what do you think? Yeah. I love Eric table too. I do use it and I was used working off of Eric's one, but um, yeah, I made some adjustments because I don't understand the formulas either, but yeah, <laughs> working on it. No, absolutely. I mean, it's been, it's been, I can't remember the last time where Mimi gave us a dud of a tip. Well, thank you. That's very kind. You know, I try. She, you're, you're literally trapped by success now, Mimi. I know. Sorry. <laughs> the, only way, the only way out, Mimi, is like a jot not pro tip or something. I know. Like like, and I think I'll, I've had those. I think I have to do jot dot pro tips like for a month or six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> one's not going to get you off the hook. It's got to be it's gotta consistently... Just really stinky for a long time yeah i mean right. somebody we know has set that bar pretty low and so <laughs> you're gonna have some trouble beating that <laughs> i'm really happy That's... about that actually oh, I, know. <laughs> I know you did it right Eric. it was all in his plan it's all his plan well i, I want to thank uh dawn and racine for taking time out of their valuable days to share their experiences and and their wisdom in their land investing journey with all of us. I just have one final question for both of you. Don, you can start. What would be your final words of encouragement or final words of advice? If somebody's listening to this podcast and they're kind of on the fence on whether they want to do, you know, land investing or going to flight school, what would be your advice? Flight school, all the way. Go to flight school. Find an accountability partner that you can um, connect with because you need that. And then um, immerse yourself in the community on Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of folks that are willing to help. And um, there's some kind people out there. I, I just, real quick, Larry Overstreet, I met him because of Mimi. And I feel like Larry took, he took two hours one day on Zoom with me, showing me how to do due diligence. And he just, he shared with me so many things I didn't even know that I needed to know. And so, you know, um, and he still supports me. When I told him I was going to be on live, he just gave me this really nice message. And you know, he makes me, he makes me really feel like, you know, I'm doing things right. And so I think that that's the ultimate, this community and, um, and flight school. That's awesome. Did we cry, Dawn? Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. And good news for Larry, his son was assigned an F-16 and drop night this past weekend. Woo! His youngest wow. son's going through fighter or through flying training. He's going to be in fighter training in the next year. Wow. Pretty That's exciting. Awesome. Pretty Congratulations, exciting. Over Streets, if you're listening. I know they are. <laughs> but that's awesome. Um, Racine, how about you? Final words of, of advice? Um, yeah, just sign up for flight school and just do it. Follow the recipe, you know keep mailing and marketing. I had no clue what that was, but yeah, now I'm doing it. So. <laughs> it actually works. So just, yeah, keep going. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I want to, again, thank the listeners. Thank Dawn and Racine. And if you're listening to this, you're getting value. The three nicest things you can do for us is subscribe, rate, review the podcast send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Is everybody ready? We're going to do this. One, two, three. 
Let's let that freedom, freedom ring. 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 Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Big group. Pass for the course. <laughs> awesome. So, Racine and Donna, I, I imagine you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but in in quarantine, you guys are like not bothered at all, like because it's you're in paradise. Am I wrong? No, my nails all came off, and I have white hair <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I'm bothered every day. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> the ladies can relate. Yes, I'm falling apart at home. <laughs> Racine, how about you? Um, I mean, my roots were getting so grown out. I had to get my husband to help me, and he, thank God, he only did the back of my head because I could tell that it wasn't very good at all. <laughs> so, and now he wants me to cut his hair, and I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I did offer to to do like the foil thing for my wife. And she's like, I don't want to look like a, like have, I think there were zebra lines or something. I don't know what she was talking about. <laughs> like lion lines. I didn't understand. So I'm like, I could go on YouTube and do this. And she was very scared. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> So, no, no good. No. All right. <laughs> Mimi, is Dave, is Dave going to just bring up? Oh, Dave looks like he's right out of the 70s. It's ridiculous. I'm thinking my <laughs> dog is going to help me. I tried the root magic root erase off of the Amazon, but it wasn't enough. Trying to get, I'm trying to promote my hairdresser to start her own home business. I'm a huge fan of starting home businesses for the ladies, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I got to keep talking with her. <laughs> nice very nice all right well well thanks again everybody um and this is really fun I, I think we should continue doing these and grilling different geeks maybe uh i don't know who, who else could we uh have jump on the on the round table we hit the we hit the hawaii the land arb queen racine we got to give you some kind of nickname What's what's Racine's nickname going to be? It's uh, tricky. I feel like we should give that homework to Mike Zeno because he's, you know, he works in the good. fire department. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> everybody's got a nickname he's, in the fire department. Yeah, this is, he could figure that out. They might not be appropriate for radio, but <laughs> that's true. Mike's afraid to talk I, now. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> do we have enough people from overseas that we could do an international one besides Horst? We got Horst. Sven um, from Germany. Sven from Germany. Maybe we could do Just an, those two guys. We could do. One. We should do the international one. Because that would be really interesting about Australia. Yeah. Yeah. We could do the international. Maybe, maybe a Northeast. virtual mailbox and how they how they do that with their offers and the mail and deeds. Yeah. That'd be a really good one. Yeah, because they have some uh, interesting challenges besides the time zone that you guys have, Donna Racine. They have some other interesting challenges with language and laws. Might be interesting. Yeah, just like notarizing documents there. Yeah. Is 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 very different. Uh, Scott Todd, you look like you're, you're furrowing you're furrowing your eye your eyes. No, I'm just trying to figure out uh, something here. Something here. Yeah, Scott's like me. He's got the attention span of a ferret on a double cappuccino. So we're just we're, uh, just trying to figure out some some little issue here, but it's all right. We're on the surface. Uh, Good try. Not, not at all. Surface is, uh, surface is rock solid, Mark. Is it? I'm trying to is answer. It? A question. Is it? I'm trying to answer a question for our great LG Pass development team because they're like one question away of being able to roll out our remailing program. Oh That's man, exciting. that 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 program is going to be ridiculous. It's, it is so good. 
live. It's not live right now. It's like one step away from being live. All I got to do is give them the thumbs up and I just have them looking at one thing. So. All right. Can, awesome. Can you um make a favicon for the LG pass? So I know which tab it is. <laughs> we have one. Really? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, why is it not showing up? Mine just looks like a globe. Uh, weird. Okay. Your hey. request will be fulfilled. Oh, thank you. Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks everybody. Uh, Scott and Mike, are you guys going to stay on? We'll do a Facebook live. I have a heart stop. This is, uh, it's, um, I can't, I, so I have, I have like two anniversaries. Isn't that weird? Today's one of them. All happy, right. Um, happy anniversary. Been there. That's that's okay. Happy anniversary. I'm confused. I know. They got married by the justice of the peace, and then they got the church wedding. See? I gotcha. I, I, I gotcha. Was, I could have. Very simple. Very that's simple. why she's she's detective. <laughs> I feel like there's a story there. There, yeah. Am I turning red? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're turning red. Yes, you're turning red. All right, hot we, stop we better. In Thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, we, we better go. All right, thanks everybody.